Welcome to the Ring of Faith, where we coach you through God's Word and how to become a knockout artist in life. Today our show is called Fixed Fight, and we're talking about the favor of God. And I love the scripture, Psalm 512, it says, For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous, and if you're a child of God, you are the righteousness of God in Christ. That's right. With favor, you will surround him as with a shield. God's favor surrounds you with a shield. That's right. Stick around to find out more about Fixed Fight. Welcome back to the Ring of Faith. Today our show is called Fixed Fight. Fixed Fight. And we're talking about the favor of God. And we have the favor of God if we're a born-again Christian. Now, Anthony, years ago, you experienced a lot of favor when you got on that television show called The Contender. Tell us about that experience. Yeah, um, The Contender was a boxing reality show with Sylvester Stallone and Sugar Ray Leonard as the host. Um, I just happened to be in the boxing gym one day working out with this kid that was getting ready to fight. And his trainer had brought the promoters or the producers over to watch him, you know, watch him train because he wanted to get him on the show. I'd only fought like twice in five years, but I was just happened to be there the day that they came. Well, me and the kid was sparring. And they liked both of us, so they asked us to come down to Tunica, Mississippi, and audition. Well, the kid that they came for didn't go, and so I ended up going. Right. Got down there. I met Frank Stallone. That's Sylvester Stallone's brother, and some different producers and. I worked out for them and they asked, you know, if I did anything else and I said, well, I sing. And so I sang a Josh Turner song called The Long Black Train and me and uh, Frank Stallone really hit it off. He knew some of the same people here in Nashville that I did. And so, mm -hmm. you know, it was just, man, it was just my time. And like all the years, you know, you know, struggling to make it and trying to, you know, trying to make it big in boxing and different things, this was my opportunity. And it wasn't because I was a great fighter, but it was because of the favor of God. And so I got on that show, and it opened up the door for us to do so much Christian television, give our testimony, and we've been on this show here for six years. But it all started with that, the favor of God. That's right. You did experience a lot of favor getting on the show out of how many boxers again tried out for that between, show? Between six and seven thousand. Six and seven thousand fighters and they narrowed it down to how many? Four, uh, Sixteen. Sixteen fighters and he was one of them. That's mm. impressive. And I wasn't even any good. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were great, but this was actually, like you said, past kind of when you were yeah. fighting a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was awesome though. You did great. Thank you. Alright, so today we have a key scripture about the favor of God and basically it comes from Acts chapter 10. And verse 34 and it says in the King James that God is no respecter of persons but I'm actually going to read the Passion Translation which is one of our favorite translations mm. right now because it just really brings out um, a, an awesome meaning behind this whole scripture and this is Peter talking and, and it goes Peter said now I know for certain that God doesn't show favoritism with people but treats everyone on the same basis it makes no difference what race of people one belongs to, if they show deep reverence for God and are committed to doing what's right, they're acceptable before Him. I mean, that's really that's brings great. out a lot behind it, that God does not show favoritism. The promises of God in Him are yes and amen, no matter where you come from, what your background is, you know, whether you were a boxer or a singer, whatever your, your upbringing was, it doesn't matter. The promises of God will work for you and the favor of God can work in your life. And I want to encourage you as a born again child of God, you got blood privilege. And I mean, if you grew up like I did, if you knew my background, I mean, I've been in jail so many different times. I've been pulled over for nothing. I went to jail one time for a guy, he used my identification. I ha he didn't show up for court and I had to go to jail for him. So, I mean, I've been in jail a lot, I've been in trouble a lot. That was because I was an idiot. But when I received Jesus and I met Jesus, that's when I got that blood privilege. And if you're a born again child of God, like it says in Acts 10, 34, God ain't no respecter. He will give you blood privilege. I encourage you not to lean on the color of your skin. Lean on who's within. You got rights. You have privileges as a born again child of God. Go to Ephesians and see who you are in Christ. 
You are blessed. You are chosen. You are accepted. You are blameless. You are forgiven. 2 Corinthians 5.21, you are the righteousness of God in Christ because of the blood privilege that Jesus died to give you. That's so good, Anthony. And, you know, we basically are in a fixed fight. Now, in boxing, were there ever fixed fights that you could... <laughs> I mean, we can speculate. We'll just say that, right? Uh -huh, that there yeah. were some fixed fights when you watch boxing. Some yeah, that you're like, there's no way that person won that fight, uh -huh. and yet they gave it to him. But really, when it comes to the promises of God, it is a fixed fight. I mean, we have access to these promises no matter where we came from, like we said before, no matter what you've been through, no matter what you've done. You know, the Bible says that, you know, we can have the favor of God working in our life if we're born again. So today we're going to give you some fixed fight facts. And the first one is just, as Christians, we have eternal life. And I love John 10:10, 10, 10, one of my favorite scriptures, the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. But I've come that you might have life in it more abundantly. That's why Jesus came. That was his purpose, to give you life. That life starts right now when you believe and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, but it goes on into eternity. That's a fixed fight. That's the favor of God. All you have to do is believe and confess that he's Lord and receive that free gift of salvation. And that life goes on for eternity. It's an amazing piece of favor. The Bible says in Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Right. Philippians chapter 3, and verse 20 says, for our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. See, we live here on this earth, but our citizenship is in heaven. Right. That's why the Bible says in Philippians 4, 19, my God will supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. The Bible says in Romans 8, 5, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. If I'm leaning on my natural, who I am, then I don't have the favor of God, and I don't have the blessing, and I'm just going to have to live, and I'm going to have to struggle, and I'm going to work it out. But if I'm identifying with who I am in Christ, then it's back to the garden. God has always intended us to be in the Garden of Eden, to rest for peace. Everything is already laid out and provided for us, Ephesians 2.10, and we are His masterpiece, one translation says, created for good works which He preordained that we should walk in them. we got a preordained path, and it's the favor path that we're supposed to walk in. But if I'm relying on who I am, what I've done, and this, that, and the other, then I'll never have that. I'll never walk in that favor. I'll never walk in that blessing of what Jesus died to give me. That's good, Anthony. And of course, it's just, you know, this is good news we're sharing with you that the favor of God is there for anybody mm -hmm. who's willing to first and foremost believe Jesus and confess him as Lord, but then also really, you know, identify with who God says you are in his word. You know, just recognizing your identity in Christ was one of the things that really changed my life. And Anthony mentioned that verse earlier uh, about that we are the righteousness of God in Christ. And that really changed my life because I had seen myself up until that point based on my performance. And I always felt like I never measured up. I, even though I was, you know, talented at a lot of things, I still felt like I could never be good enough. No matter what I did, no matter how hard I tried. But then that freed me when I learned that verse and I learned that I am the righteousness of God in Christ. It has nothing to do with anything I've done. It has nothing to do with where I came from. I am righteous because of Jesus. And when I identified that way, I began to see myself differently. I began to see myself as successful. I began to see myself as whole. I began to see myself as healed. I began to see myself as talented and smart and all these things I was trying to do. I couldn't see myself because I was looking through the wrong lens. But now I look through the lens of how Jesus sees me and it's made me free. Amen. The Bible says in Job 3.25, it says, that the thing that Job so greatly feared came upon him. We draw what we are, mm -hmm. not what necessarily what we think we want. We draw what we are. You know, Proverbs 23 and verse 7 says, As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. You think, man, I'm just always having problems, and you're always talking about your problems, and this, man, it's just, it's just life, man. It's just because of where I grew up. It's just because, no, it's because of what you believe in. You need to change how you see yourself. You need to see yourself like God sees you, like she said that she did. You know, the thing Job so greatly feared, he brought it upon himself. It's a self-fulfilling self prophecy. Jesus says that we are accepted. 
Jesus said that you are righteous. Jesus says that you are blameless. You are holy. Jesus says he's your supplier. He's your healer. This is how he sees you. Deuteronomy 28 says you're, you're supposed to be blessed in your coming, blessed in your going, the head, not the tail, above and not beneath, a lender and not a borrow. This is what God says about you. Now, I encourage you, how, how, how am I going to change how I see myself? How am I going to do this? Get into those promises. Start meditating on those promises. According to Joshua 1.8, you will make your way prosperous, whole, nothing missing, nothing broken. Psalm chapter 1, verse 1 through 3 says, Blessed is a man who meditates in my word day and night. He should be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, who brings forth fruit in season, and it shall not wither. This is how you get it in you. You meditate, you mutter, speak it over and over. I am blessed, I am chosen, I am holy, I am righteous. Start putting it in your eyes and in your ears and coming out your mouth. That's how you change from the inside out and that's how you live the abundant life Jesus died to give you and that favor will surround you like a shield and he'll open doors for you that no man can close, close doors no man can open in Jesus' name. That's right, well that's the end of round one. Stick around, we're gonna be right back with more Ring of Faith. Jesus said in Mark chapter 4 and verse 35 to open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. There are so many people in need of what we have in Jesus. At the Ring of Faith, we have the unique opportunity to reach beyond the church walls and meet the tangible needs of widows, orphans, the homeless, and the hurting. If you would like to be a part of all that God is doing through this ministry, go to ringoffaithtv.com, click on the donate tab, and you'll find all the information you need to help others become a knockout artist in life. Welcome back to the Ring of Faith. Today our show is called Fixed Fight, and we're talking about the favor of God. You know, the Bible says in dictionary.com, and it defines favor as excessive kindness or unfair partiality, preferential treatment. And as a child of God, you got preferential treatment. That's right. We have unfair <laughs> say that, partiality <laughs> as a born again child of God. Mm -hmm. These promises are not just for anybody. God, mm -hmm. you know, loves the world. He so loved the world that he gave his only son. But these promises and this favoritism, this is for his children. These very specific in the New Testament about all of these promises are for those that believe and receive Jesus as their Lord. Today we've been giving you fixed fight facts. And the second one is just that there is favor for God's children. We talked to the first fixed fight fact was just that we have eternal life in Jesus. But not only eternal life, but we have favor. And that's kind of where we're going with this whole program is that we have the favor of God. First John 3 1 says, See what an incredible quality of love the Father has given, shown, bestowed on us, that we should be permitted to be named and called and counted the children of God. And so we are. The reason that the world does not know us is that it does not know Him. Mm -hmm. They don't understand. They don't see it. You know, the devil's the god of this world system. The world system does not see mm -hmm. what's so special about mm -hmm. Christians. They don't understand, you know, why Christians act the way they act, believe the way they do, speak the way they do, stand up for the things that they do. Mm -hmm. They don't understand. But we do it because we love God and He has given us favor. And we understand that. When you have the favor of God, this unfair partiality, you want to serve Him. You want to love Him. You want to give Him everything that you have. Psalm 512 says, For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor you will surround Him as a shield. You and I are supposed to have favor everywhere we go. That right. preferential treatment. Not saying that there won't be challenging times. Not saying the devil won't try to attack you. But that favor surrounds you. You're going to have Philippians 4, 6, that peace that passes all understanding. Okay, there's a challenge in front of me, but I know on the other side that I'm going to walk in that blessing. Because it's already, like we said before, it's a fixed fight. We have already won. And if you, if you don't grab onto these promises, right. even though it's already laid out there for you, then it's not going to benefit you at all. Um, it's just like you got money in the bank. Somebody, somebody, you say your parent died, they left you an inheritance and it's in the bank. You have to go to that bank and you have to withdraw it. Jesus left us this inheritance. We got to go to the bank and in the Word of God and we got to withdraw it. By renewing our minds, by start thinking how He thinks, that's mm -hmm. why it says in Philippians 2 5, let this mind be in you, that which was also in Christ Jesus. And so we let that mind be in us by renewing our minds to what it says. The Spirit of God lives on the inside of you. 
you start seeing like he sees, walking like he walks. You know, First John 4, 17, as Jesus is in this world, so are we. We are supposed to walk around in the blessing. When Jesus needed food, he didn't be like, oh God, what I'm going to do is because of where I came from, or this, that, and the other. No, they tried that with him in Mark chapter 6. Uh, we know him. We know it, it, it didn't matter what they thought of him. It's what God thought of him. So when he needed food, what did he do? He took a little boy's lunch and fed the multitudes. When he needed money, what did he do? He sent Peter to grab it out of a fish's mouth. It was already laid out for him. Your supplies, everything you ever need, want, and desire is already here for you. When, when, when God made the, made the whole earth, he spoke it into existence. Adam and Eve didn't like Adam didn't have to get up. Oh man, what am I gonna do today? Oh man, I, I gotta go. I got what am I gonna do? What am I gonna eat? What, what, what where am I gonna live? No, it was already laid out for him. Mm -hmm. He made the earth and the fullness thereof and gave it to mankind. Mm -hmm. And then Adam's sin messed it up. But the good news is what Jesus did for us, the second Adam. Mm -hmm. He died and gave us that abundant life. Mm -hmm. And God's already laid it out for us. Right. He's the beginning and the end. So you start tapping into that favor. Start believing who you are in Christ. And that's when you're going to walk in the fullness of the blessing in Jesus. That's so good, Anthony. And, you know, there's a couple other great scriptures about favor. I'm going to read just in a minute. But I was thinking, Anthony, when you were talking about, you know, Psalm 512, just how important it is right now more than ever mm -hmm. to put all, all, all your faith in God's word. Mm -hmm. Man is going to let you down. Mm -hmm. We've seen it. We've been there where people have let us down. And, you know, trust me, we vote, you know, when it comes to mayors and governors and, you know, president and Supreme Court and all these people. It's very important to vote. Mm -hmm. It's very important to, you know, use your platform if you have it for Jesus and for, you know, his purposes and his kingdom. But I want to encourage you that no matter what decision they end up making ultimately, mm -hmm. Our faith has got to be in God. And Psalm 512 is a great scripture to pray over your family every single day that he will surround us with the shield of favor. That shield of favor is around us because of Jesus. And, I, and claim it, like Anthony was talking about, lay a hold of that inheritance, grab a hold of it. God, thank you, Lord, we have favor. That, you know, Psalm 91, a thousand may fall at my side, 10,000 at my right hand. It doesn't matter, it's not gonna come near us. Put your faith in God and His promises in His Word. Don't put your faith in man. They will let you down. That's good. Like she said, you know, we vote because it is important who's in office. You know, and I encourage you, vote who goes the most with the Bible. Right. We're going to give account before God one day for what we've done in this body. And we're going to, I mean, we're going to have to consequences here if you don't truly know and believe. So I encourage you, when it is time to vote, Vote who stands up more for the Bible. Again, it's not for the person, but it's for their platform. That's good. Good little tidbit. All right. So Proverbs 12, 2, another great scripture to pray. A good man obtains favor from the Lord, but a man of wicked intentions he'll condemn. And Job 10, 12 says, You've granted me life and favor, and your care has preserved my spirit. And then the last one is Psalm 30, verse 5, that says, For his anger is but for a moment, but his favor is for life. I love that scripture. Mm -hmm. His favor's for life. His favor is upon his children for life. From the moment that we believe and receive Jesus as Lord, we have favor if we tap into that. And when we say tap into that, we're just talking about believing his word, speaking his word, and putting our ultimate faith in that word. Not Again, not trusting man, not trusting the circumstances or whatever's happening in the world. We have mm -hmm. got to put our faith in God if we want to succeed. You know, like she said that Proverbs 12, 2, it says a good man obtains favor from the Lord. And that's not saying you're perfect or it's good because of your goodness. It's because of Jesus' goodness. Right. So when we talk about we're believing in what he's done for us. Mm -hmm. So I'm a good man because of Jesus. I'm, I'm righteous because of Jesus. It's not because of my good works. You know, that's why the whole religious teaching is a lot of the religions you know there's there's the good religion as far as you know you're helping the widows and the orphans that jesus talks about but then there's the bad religion you know it's where it's, it's all about what i do for god you know you know that's what religion says you you do all this good stuff and you take it to god and you say god will you accept this christianity and about the relationship with god is jesus did it all brings us to man and says man will you receive this that's grace that's what grace is all about. And because of the grace of God, that's why, and that grace does favor, benefits. So because of the grace and what Jesus has done, you are a good man. Mm -hmm. And when you start identifying with that, then, then your outward circumstances 
will start lining up with who you are on the inside. Right. That's good, Anthony. All right. Psalm 33, 12 says, Blessed, or we could say highly favored, is another translation for that word, is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen as his own inheritance. And of course, that's a great scripture to stand on when you're praying for our country and for our nation and everything this world is going through. And, you know, it's interesting because recently I, I saw a preacher say, you know, that, you know, the hearts of people is what we need to, to go after as Christians. We need to change hearts. We need to, you know, obviously teach them the gospel, share the gospel so that God can change their heart. And then, you know, someone else, you know, sort of slammed them for that being sort of inaction or whatever for not uh, wanting to do more than just uh, spread the gospel. I want to encourage you that, you know, I was thinking about this with the Supreme Court and, you know, there may be Supreme Court decisions we agree with, ones we don't, and, you know, certain leaders put in Supreme Court people we like, ones we don't, but really when it boils down to is the Supreme Court is actually a reflection of the heart of the people. Mm -hmm. That's what it comes down to. And if they're not, you know, making the decisions that we believe as Christians, we've got to reach more hearts, mm -hmm. if you think about it. We need to teach people God's Word, which is what Anthony and I have been doing here. And we really have made a commitment lately to just show people God's Word, to show them what it says. Mm -hmm. Here's the truth in God's Word. And this truth will make you free mm -hmm. if you let it. And this truth will help you to rise above circumstances in your life. And that's why we want to share it with you. But also we know that it can change hearts. Mm -hmm. The Word of God has transforming power. Romans 12, 2, we can be renewed in our minds if we renew it to God's Word. And when we have renewed minds, we'll have minds that line up with what Christ is thinking. And when we have minds that line up with what Christ is thinking, we'll make better decisions. We'll vote the Bible, like Anthony said. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And two, you know, like she said, we've been, her and I, we were like, we, you've got to make that line in the sand. Like, this is what God's Word says. No matter what I feel, no matter if I like it or I don't like it, this is what God says about a situation. I don't change God's Word. I have to change to line up to God's Word. Right. It's not in my own strength, not on my own self-effort, because it's the grace of God that empowers me to do it. Titus chapter 2, verse 11 and 12, it talks about the grace of God has appeared to all men, teaching them about denying ungodliness. If you've truly received that favor, you truly received the grace of God, it's going to teach you to deny ungodliness. And ungodliness is going against what God has said. Mm -hmm. Like I said, what God says about marriage, what God says about uh, abortion, what God says about, you know, your eating, what God says about, you know, drinking, what God says about worry, what God says about everything. We got to line ourselves up with what God says. He's the, he's the one that made the rules, and we got to live by those rules. It's not to get to heaven, but it's to get heaven here out on earth. And if we don't do that, there are consequences. The wages of sin is death. And like she said, blessed, empowered, successful is the nation whose God is Lord. If we're not putting God first, then our nation is going to fall. Mm -hmm. And it is important who we vote for. If we don't vote and get people in there that's going to stand up for God and what His Word says, then this nation is going to fall. As believers, we can still be taken care of because we're our faith in God, but this nation is going to fall. Just like with Noah. Noah had eight people that got on the ark. Not many. The whole world drowned. Not many. So it's important to tell people about Jesus because you don't want the whole world drowning around you. That's so good, Anthony. And I was just thinking again while you were talking mm. about somebody. You're a good I, thinker. I do, I think, when you talk. She's a thinker. You know, he just helps me to think. <laughs> Basically, years ago, we had a friend, a, a mutual friend that Anthony and I knew, and she was not making the best choices in life. Mm. And her excuse was, well, it's just how I feel. And she said, when God changes how I feel about it, I'll change my actions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's kind of the way the culture's gone. That's kind of the way this whole, you know, nation has gone. Mm -hmm. It's how we feel. It's all about how we feel leading our decisions. But that's really not what God's Word says. Mm -hmm. And basically, our attitude should be, I don't really feel like it right now, possibly, but I'm going to do it because it's God's Word. I'm going to believe it because it's God's Word, and I'll just trust Him that He'll change my feelings over time. Start thinking about Jesus. 
Mm-hmm. Start thinking about his covenant. Start thinking about his word. Start thinking about his promises. Start right. thinking about his love. Think about Romans 5, 5. And his love is shed abroad in my heart by the Holy Spirit. Start thinking about how what he did for me. Start thinking about how I can go out and help somebody else. That'll change your feelings. Yeah. You start getting your mind off yourself, getting your mind on other people. Start doing what God says to do. Acts ten thirty eight. how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, how God anointed you as a born-again child of God with the Holy Ghost and power and went around doing good, start doing that. That'll get your mind off yourself. That'll get that'll change your feelings. And when you start feeling like, oh man, this is awesome. This is giving me life. And that life's released. I'm helping other people. That's what you were born to do. Not going by your feelings, not watching what the news is saying, not watching not watching your favorite sitcom. No. Get in that word. Allow God's word to change you. That's so good. And of course when that word of God changes you, that's when you're gonna see that favor at work in your life. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, we're going to pray a prayer right now where you can invite Jesus into your heart. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10 and verse 9 that if you'll confess that Jesus is your Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you shall be saved. According to Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 9, it's not about anything that you have or haven't done. It says that we are saved by grace through faith that not of ourself, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Romans 10, 13, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. See, we're born with a sin nature, separated from God. Romans chapter 3 and verse 23 says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 5, 8, but God demonstrated his love toward us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He died for you on that old rugged cross because you couldn't do it. None of us could. We've all fall short. We're born with that sin nature, but we're saved by grace. It's a free gift from the Almighty God. So I'm asking you, invite Jesus into your life. Make that commitment to Him. Salvation is a free gift, but surrender your life to Him. Romans 12.1, present your body a living sacrifice to Him. Invite Jesus in, surrender to Him, and walk with Him. I'm going to say this prayer. I encourage you to say it with your mouth, to mean it from your heart. Father God. Father God. I come to you in Jesus' name. I come to you in Jesus' name. Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. I believe God raised you from the dead. I believe God raised you from the dead. I ask you to come into my life. I ask you to come into my life. I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. I ask for all your gifts. I ask for all your gifts. I believe I receive it. I believe I receive it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 3 that no man or woman can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Confess out loud, Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Lord. You just got born again. I encourage you to get into a full Bible teaching church. And if you're in the Nashville Mount Juliet area, come to Joy Church Mount Juliet. That's right, Anthony. And if you've been blessed by this program and you feel led to give financially, you can go to ringoffaithtv.com, click on the Donate tab. You'll find all the information you need to help us bring the Word of God to the world. Renew your mind to God's Word by seeing, saying, and believing His promises. And And that's how you become a knockout artist in life.